Hello all. Today we're going to be looking at finding the equation of the normal to a given function at a certain point. So first off, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to differentiate our function. And uh, in order to do this, you need to get your function into a format that you feel comfortable with differentiating with, or your preferred format if you're comfortable with differentiation. So um, I could use the quotient rule here if I wanted to, or I could put it into the chain rule format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the chain rule version of it, because it will also show you how you get something like this rearranged into a single line. But again, if you want to do the uh, quotient rule, then that works as well. So we're going to need to rewrite our f of x if we want to use the chain rule. So our f of x at the moment, as we can see from there, it's y just a different form of notation that I'm using, is that 1 over bracket x squared plus 1 bracket squared. Now what we can do is if we want to move our denominator term into the numerator, we need to inverse our exponent in the denominator. In this case, it's 2, so it will need to be negative 2 when we rewrite it. Because this is 1, we don't even need to have that out the front of the bracket. So, we end up getting x squared plus 1 in brackets to the power of negative 2. Now we have it in a format where we can differentiate it using the chain rule. So let's go ahead and differentiate this equation to get our f prime of x, the derivative. So, in order to get our f prime of x, the first thing we do is we take our exponent and we put it into the position of the coefficient of the bracket. So, we are also multiplying it there by 1, because there is technically 1 in front of the bracket, but uh, still remains negative 2. Then, really simple step, we just rewrite the bracket as is, x squared plus 1, and then we subtract 1 from our exponent to get negative 3. Following this, we then take the derivative of the terms that are in the bracket. So if this is the case, we have uh, x squared plus 1, so the derivative of a constant is always 0, so we can just ignore that. But we need to take the 2 that's in the exponent position and put it into our coefficient position in front of x. So 2 times 1 is uh, x, and then we subtract 1 from our exponent, so 2 take 1, and that's just going to make it 2x, because it's 2x to the power of 1. And there we go, we have differentiated this equation. Now what? Well, we're given a point. And at this point, x is equal to 1. So we need to find the derivative at this point, the f prime of 1. So therefore, our f prime of 1, and what we do is, wherever there's an x in the equation, we simply substitute in 1. So, equals negative 2, lots of 1 squared plus 1 to the power of negative 3, and then 2 lots of 1. Excellent. So now what do we do? Well, we just simplify this through. So now that we substitute it in, we can use our calculators, or if you wanted to, you could use arithmetic, to be able to calculate this. Just remember to put the brackets in the correct position so you make sure you're telling the calculator or you're working it out by hand and doing it correctly. So. What I'd do is if I was doing it on my calculator, I would enter bracket negative 2, then I would do bracket 1 squared plus 1, then bracket power of negative 3, then I would go bracket 2, and then I'd just close that bracket there because 2 times 1 is 2, and it gives me negative a half. Nice and simple. So therefore, our f prime of 1 equals negative a half, or negative 0 0.5, as it showed on the calculator. It's negative 0.5, sorry. It is 0 0.5, but it showed 0.5. Anyway, what we do now is we need to inverse this, because we're looking at the normal. You may remember, if you've worked with linear algebra before, 
that uh, the gradient of a perpendicular line is negative 1 divided by m, where m is the original line. So if that's the case, uh, we get from this, instead of it being negative a half, it will become 2, which is pretty cool. So now what do we do? Well, we simply have y take our original y coordinate, which in this case is a quarter, so it's y take a quarter, and then we divide that by x take our original x coordinate, which is 1. And that equals the value that we just calculated from the derivative and then uh, using the inverse because of the linear algebra concept that I just explained. Excellent. So now, what do we do? We want to separate, or should I say isolate, y from the equation. So, in order to do this, what I would do first is I would take this x take 1 term and I would bring that to the right hand side of the equation. So because it's in the denominator on the left hand side, it'll be in the numerator on the right hand side. And therefore we get y take a quarter equals 2 bracket, uh, two bracket x take 1. Okay, nice. So now what do we do? Well, we need to expand the equation. In order to expand, simply y take a quarter, and it will be 2 times by x using the distributive law, and then it would be 2 multiplied by negative 1, negative 2. Almost there now. What do we do? Well, we need to bring this quarter to the other side of the equation. So y equals 2x take 2, and then the quarter, because it was take a quarter on the left-hand side, it'll be add a quarter on this side. And there we go. Now we can simplify this down, because we have two constants. So what is negative 2 plus a quarter? Well, when we think about it, if we were to write it over a denominator of 4, then it would 8 over 4 would be 2. So therefore, if we just adding a quarter onto negative 2, it would be take 7 over 4, or negative 7 over 4, because we had 8 over 4, or negative 8 over 4, and we're adding a quarter on, so it's going to be take 7 over 4 as the end result. And there we go. That's how we find the equation of the normal from our function at a given point. Hopefully you're able to follow this. Again, I do have a video on differentiating, uh, differentiating using the chain rule, if you are a little bit stuck with that. But uh, it's quite a straightforward and simple process. you just got to remember concepts from linear algebra, uh, perpendicular lines, how they work. Because a normal, in case uh, you haven't come across this term before, is essentially at 90 degrees. So say that's line uh, y equals, well, we'll just call that f of x, for example, and then that would be the normal of f of x because it joins at a right angle there.